Two years ago, I decided to reforest my mate's paddock. The idea was to plant a tree a minute for 24 hours, 1,440 in a single day. Given I'm a hardy kind of bloke with a bucket full of fitness, I thought, no worries mate, I've got this. But I tell you what, mixing 25 types of trees, bending thousands of times, on the same steep ground over and over again, it was the hardest 24 hours I've ever had. I can feel every sinew of me right now. And it was also one of the most meaningful, testing out the potentials of a single day. I've trusted the trees to get on with living since putting them in, but I also promised I'd be back. You bloody ripper. Look at this. Bloody hell, this grass is long. If I don't see a snake, it's gonna be a freaking miracle. Wow. This is brilliant. And here, I'm standing here without a hat on in the middle of the blazing sun because I'm shaded by this tree. I'm super proud of this because things like this are so easy not to do. I'm still searching for the bloody meaning of life, to be honest, and so these sort of things, when I see it and I experience it and I, and I emotionally engage with it, it means I, I'm kind of, at least I'm being busy. At least there's an output. You're doing all right. Don't get down on yourself, mate. You'll be okay. Another good spring. Oh, hello, you're exotic. I don't even know what you are. You're a good looking tree. So are you, don't worry about it. Oh, soft. Look at you, you're a bloody nine foot tall tea tree. Fantastic. All this lovely spring growth, look at it. They've got great luster. It's like a person's got good skin. These trees, the leaves look healthy. If you were a basketball ring, I couldn't dunk you. I could bang on all day about the beauty of this scene, of just being in amongst this forest. Oop, there's a stick. Is there anything growing underneath it? No, nope. casualty, casualty. Man down. I reckon there's been anywhere between 25, 30% throwing a figure at it that haven't lived. That's pretty good. I'm as pleased as punch. This is like getting your, you know, your kid's first report card at kindergarten. This is good. I've only been back once since planting a year ago with the family. We were chuffed to see so many little tree heads bobbing about in the tall grass. I reminisced to May about how bloody inefficient it was to plant 25 types of tree in the same spot. And she remembers the day well, starting to understand the importance and inevitability of time. I'm leaning against the tree I planted. Bloody brilliant. Feels good too, nice and firm. I'm on, this, I'm on this steady slope of demise. I'm heading towards death. We all are, all humans are. As soon as you're born, you're heading towards death. A tree seems to be that, you know, these are getting bigger and stronger and they will for hundreds of years. Many of these trees here, all going to plan, will last hundreds of years. These gum behind me. But the amount of life, the amount of life that's just within my vision right now, based on this little forest I've planted. There's butterflies everywhere. There's birds over there chirping. There's insects all through here. Look at this. This is kind of like the pawn tree. There's ladybugs doing it. Well, lady man bugs. 
What's a man ladybug called? A man bug. <laughs> Much of the life that I can see and hear is here because there's an emerging forest. You can rub it all over yourself. I haven't showered for a few days. I'll get home and Helen will go, gee, you smell all right. I'll go, yeah, I've been in the bush. Oh, that's pleasing. Very pleasing looking there. Looking south towards the forest. There's a real tenderness to tree planting. You've got to be tender. You've got to really care for the planting process. That it might only take 10 seconds, but you've got to do it right. And then it's brutal. It's over to the tree. Over to you, tree, put down some roots. As I wandered around, I thought, you know what? I didn't plant this forest for me, or my daughters, nor humanity, not really. I planted it as real estate for anything other than humans. For the critters I won't meet. For birds who'll make nests I'll never see. For caterpillars and bugs that'll eat the leaves of trees rustling in the wind. A wind I won't be around to hear. And for a thousand other reasons I'll never fully understand.